So it's important to look at the fact that stress isn't actually bad for us, provided we get the chance to recover fully from it. So if you get to discharge that mobilizing energy, we'll come back to baseline. But if it goes on for too long without a recovery or it's too much, then we can get nervous system dysregulation where we get stuck in that yellow or red state. The vagal break is interrupted from bringing you back to that green state. So let's look at each one of these. So stress, if we say it's a mild acute stress reaction, like you need to get up and speak at an event. So you might notice that your heart's racing first of all. And that's because if you look at that blue line from its starting position, there's a drop off in it in how it's working. So that means the vagal brake comes off and our heart starts to beat up, beat faster. Then we get the increase in the sympathetic stress reaction. So we feel that mobilizing energy. We may or may not have adrenaline and cortisol released, but let's say you give your speech, it's a little bit scary, but then afterwards you recover. So your vagal break kicks back in and slows the heart back down. Oh, you feel that sense of relief. You feel the recovery. Your breath becomes full and you carry on having a great time. In this way, we can look at stress as being nothing more than our mind-body system mobilizing energy to meet demands. And when we discharge the activation and recover fully, we return to that baseline and our vagal break is restored. So when we do this, we actually can become more resilient under stressful situations. We can step further outside of our comfort zone. We can perform better under pressure. This can make us more resilient. On the other hand, if we look at chronic stress, so taking a little look at that picture again, we can see that there's a loss of the vagal break. So it drops out, it comes off the heart, speeds up our system, which is what we want. And then we have an increase in that sympathetic stress reaction as well. So once again, we feel that mobilizing energy coming into our system. But what we can see there is rather than it return back to baseline like it did in the previous example, there's a failure to discharge that activation completely. And then it doesn't go back to normal. And there's also a continuation of diminished vagal break. So the vagal break stays off and doesn't come back in. So for this person, they might still feel that mobilizing energy and that anxiety in their system or that sense that they need to get ready to run away or to fight. And without the vagal break being there, what that means is that when they face a stressor in the future, they may be more likely to move up into fight or flight to respond to that stress. So an example of this might be at the beginning of 2020, there were bushfires in Australia. So for a lot of people, this was very stressful. They, they had to deal with the threat to their house. And before they got the chance to recover fully, then COVID kicked in. And before getting a chance to recover from that, there may have been financial issues with their business or work as they needed to go into isolation. So this chronic stress without recovery retunes our nervous system and this is what can make us more anxious in the future. We can learn the right tools that help us to discharge the sympathetic activation and bring back vagal break so we come back to baseline. But unless we learn to do that, we can stay retuned and this makes us more prone to nervous system dysregulation or being stuck in that yellow state. Now, in the case of traumatic stress, what we see happens is there's still that loss of the vagal break. There's an extreme sympathetic response. So this would be like putting the accelerator down flat on a car. But then there's also the dorsal vagal activation. So remember, this is our 
immobilization system. And that's like applying the handbrake. So in this case, the nervous system has strong mobilizing energy and strong immobilizing energy. And it can create a feeling of freeze, being stuck, but with lots and lots of energy surging through the system. So when we face something that's traumatically stressful, and that's different for everybody to what we say is traumatic or not traumatic, this can be a pattern of responding and we may get stuck in that. We may also oscillate between the highs of anxiety and drop down to the lows of shutdown and burnout and keep oscillating that way. Eventually, this can build allostatic load, which is the wear and tear on the mind-body system that can lead to chronic illnesses. So things like chronic pain, digestive issues, we can see issues with the immune system. But when we learn to recalibrate the nervous system with the right tools, we can actually come out of this way of responding. The nervous system can unlearn this pattern so that when we face stresses in the future, we don't respond in this way. We can teach our survival brain that it can cope when things are stressful and we can bring back the functioning of our vagal break to slow us back down.